In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use scientific notation. So scientific notation is essentially used as a shorthand way to explain um, or to represent rather numbers that are either very large or very small. So basically numbers that would usually be really long to write in their standard form. We kind of condense uh, and represent as scientific notation. So for numbers that are very large and very small. So scientific notation always follows a very standard format where we have some kind of coefficient times 10 raised to some exponent. So the way I have things written here, C is our coefficient. In scientific notation, the coefficient must always have one non-zero di digit before the decimal, one and only one, so essentially this means that our coefficient is going to be greater than or equal to one and it's always going to be less than 10. So it's always going to be 1 point something to 9 point something. Um, and this part of the value is what should reflect the appropriate number of significant digits. Or whatever value we're trying to represent. So on the other side of things here, the other important thing is our exponent. So our exponent in scientific notation must be an integer. And whether it's positive or negative essentially depends on whether your number that you're trying to represent is big or small. So big numbers have positive exponents. And small numbers have negative exponents. Um, note that this exponential portion, 10 to the e, whatever e may be, since our exponent is always an integer, this is considered an exact value. So as we discussed in the previous lesson, exact values are considered to have infinite sig figs. So essentially that just means you don't need to worry about this portion of the scientific notation when you're doing calculations. You only have to count the sig figs in the coefficient and that's what is limiting uh, the sig figs in any calculations that you do. This portion is exact. <coughs> which means we treat it as has having infinite sig figs uh, and infinity is larger than anything else. So that's never gonna be your limiting factor. So you will want to get comfortable um, converting numbers in and out of scientific notation um, and rounding them as needed. So for example, if we wanted to take a really big number and convert that into scientific notation. Um, the way I essentially think about this is we know that we want one uh, non-zero digit before our decimal. So our decimal point is gonna end up between the two and the six. And then figuring out the exponent is essentially how many places are you moving the decimal to get it where you want it to go. So it's not written in here, but if we were to put a decimal point in this number, it would go at the end. So if we need the decimal point to end up between the two and the six, that means we're moving it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places. So this number would be equivalent to 2.605 times 10 to the ninth milliliters. This, I hope we can all agree, is a big number 
anything greater than one, essentially, um, or greater than 10, anyhow, um, is going to have a positive exponent. So big number means our exponent is going to be positive. We're moving it nine places, so that means our exponent is going to, moving the decimal nine places, so that means our exponent is going to be positive nine. If we have a small number, let's say it's 0 0.00004920, if we want to convert this into scientific notation, we are looking, again, to get one non-zero digit before our decimal point, so we want it to end up between the 4 and the 9. It is currently over here between these zeros, so to get it where we want it to go, we need to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places over. So if we converted this number into scientific notation, we would have 4.920 times 10 Four, five, to the negative fifth. This is a small number, less than one. So this is going to have a negative exponent. We moved our decimal five places, so that exponent is going to be negative five. Um, you should also feel comfortable going in the other direction, taking a number that is in scientific notation and converting it into a number in standard notation. So if, for example, we had 8.95, times 10 to the fourth meters. <clears throat> Positive exponent tells us this is a big number. So to make this number 8.95 bigger, we're going to move our decimal to the right, and we're going to move it to the right four places. So I don't really like to think strictly in terms of do I move the decimal point to the left or to the right, um, because I'm personally really bad at memorizing things that don't make sense to me. Um, and positive and negative exponents are not intrinsically related to the directions left and right, but they are related to numbers being bigger or smaller. So 10 to the positive fourth is going to make that number bigger. If I take 8.95 and I multiply it by what equates to 10,000, it's going to get larger. So I should end up with my decimal point moving five, oh, sorry, four, positions for places over in the direction that makes the number larger, which is to the right. So this would be the same as 89,500 meters. We can also do one going in the other direction. If we have, let's say, 6.42 times 10 to the negative sixth uh, centimeters, sure, pick a unit, any unit. Um, negative exponent is going to make my number smaller. So if I'm taking 6.42 and multiplying it by 10 to the negative 6, it is going to get smaller by 6 orders of magnitude. So I'm going to be moving my decimal point in the direction that makes the number smaller, which is to the left. So that means we're going to end up with five zeros after our decimal point, and then the 6.42. So our decimal, again, as a reminder, was here in our scientific notation. So when we converted it to regular notation, we moved, oops, we moved one, two, three, four, five, six positions over since our exponent was negative six. Since it was negative, we moved it in the direction that made that number smaller.